In chapter uh, 17, uh, we will talk about uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, the symptoms and uh, main causes of uh, Parkinson's disease. And uh, also we will describe uh, the mechanism of action and uh, adverse effects of uh, different uh, groups of anti-Parkinson uh, drugs. Uh, the main cause of uh, Parkinson's disease is uh, degeneration of uh, certain neurons in uh, the basal ganglia. As you remember, uh, the basal ganglia are located in, uh, in the brain of humans and um, the neurons of basal ganglia produce a neurotransmitter dopamine. By pr producing dopamine, uh, basal ganglia uh, help to regulate skeletal muscle tone and body movements. Normal function of the basal ganglia depends upon two main neurotransmitters. Those are acetylcholine, uh, which is excitatory neurotransmitter, and it increases muscle tone and activity, and dopamine, which is inhibitory neurotransmitter, and therefore it inhibits muscle tone and activity. When those two neurotransmitters are balanced, it produces smooth movements of muscles. Dopamine is produced by neurons that are located in substantia nigra. Uh, that is one of the uh, basal ga ganglia. Def and deficiency of uh, dopamine uh, actually leads uh, to what we call today Parkinson's disease. Uh, the first symptoms um, that uh, patients with Parkinson's disease develop will be uh, muscle rigidity and uh, resting tremors. And usually those first symptoms affect only one side of the body. But as uh, a disorder progresses, uh, the whole body, both sides of the body will be affected and patients will uh, develop a bradykinesia, uh, they lose ability to uh, maintain a normal posture and balance and eventually they become uh, uh, disabled, completely disabled. For treatment of um, uh, Parkinson's disease, we use different drugs and we divided all of them into a few different groups uh, based on uh, their mechanism of action. And we start with levodopa. We already know that uh, uh, Parkinson's uh, disease symptoms are caused by um, deficiency of dopamine, but we cannot uh, administer uh, dopamine into the patient's system because dopamine is not lipid-soluble uh, substrate. It means uh, it, it cannot uh, cross a blood-brain barrier. Levodopa is a metabolic precursor of dopamine. It is a lipid soluble. It actually has a chemical structure that is very similar to amino acid phenylalanine. Uh, so it has uh, ability to cross blood brain barrier. And uh, as soon as it crosses blood brain barrier and reaches a uh, substantia nigra in a patient's brain, it is uh, converted into dopamine. Uh, levodopa is administered uh, orally uh, because it's uh, well absorbed in uh, uh, the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, and please uh, remember uh, we administer it with uh, carbidopa, uh, which is an enzyme that prevents um, conversion of levodopa and dopamine before it reaches a patient's brain. The second reason why we administer uh, levodopa with carbidopa uh, is uh, it allows us to uh, decrease dose of levodopa and uh, uh, we, this way we uh, reduce uh, side effects that can be produced uh, by levodopa.
Uh, adverse effects. The most common adverse effects that caused by levodopa are uh, nausea, vomiting, and a loss of appetite. Uh, besides those uh, symptoms, uh, levodopa can interfere with the cardiovascular center in the brain of the patients. As a result, patients will uh, develop symptoms of orthostatic hypotension. Also, levodopa can uh, stimulate beta-1 adrenergic receptors. So basically it can work like adrenergic um, drugs and cause a rapid or irregular heartbeat, especially uh, when levodopa is converted uh, into dopamine in uh, peripheral circulation. Another side effect um, uh, that patients might develop uh, when they are on a long-term treatment with uh, levodopa, uh, it is when they develop tolerance uh, to levodopa or we call it wearing off effect. When patients develop wearing off a uh, side effect, um, they develop a movement disorders as, uh, and um, we call it immobility. An example of immobility will be, for example, dyskinesia, um, means patients have un involuntary movements of different parts of their body, or dystonia, uh, when the muscle, muscle strength will be decreased. Uh, to control this side effect, uh, we usually change to a control release preparations or we add another agent uh, that can help to bring uh, symptoms of uh, wearing off effect under co control. And the last side effect is called on-off phenomenon. It happens when a lot of um, dopamine, high, uh, doses of dopamine uh, gets accumulated in the patient's brain. And in this case, patients will develop uh, uh, symptoms uh, with alternating periods of mobility and immobility. Uh, means uh, sometimes those patients become frozen in one specific position. In this case, patients are recommended to um, take smaller doses with frequent administration and that uh, uh, helps uh, to prevent um, uh, the symptoms of on-off phenomenon and also those uh, patients are recommended to do not take levodopa with the meal uh, because sometimes I mean acids from the meal uh, can compete with levodopa and decrease levels of uh, levodopa in the brain of uh, patients. Uh, interactions. Uh, antipsychotic uh, drugs uh, decrease effectiveness of levodopa because they block dopamine receptors. Second group, MAO-A inhibitors that we use for treatment of a depression. Uh, with levodopa, MAO-A inhibitors uh, increase levels of norepinephrine. As a result, patients might develop a hypertensive crisis. And the last one, uh, last one is uh, vitamin B6. Uh, it um, decreases effectiveness of levodopa uh, because it increases metabol uh, rate of metabolism of uh, levodopa in the patient's system. The ne next group uh, of drugs that we use uh, for treatment of uh, Parkinson's disease inhibit enzymes that uh, metabolize dopamine in the patient's brain. Let's look at this picture. So we already know that levodopa has the ability to cross a blood-brain barrier. As soon as a levodopa crosses blood-brain barrier, it will be converted into dopamine. And here's in the brain, there are two enzymes that will metabolize a dopamine. The first one is called MAO-B, uh, MAO-B or monoamine oxidase B enzyme and the second enzyme is called a COMT enzyme or catechol O methyltransferase enzyme. So basically if we inhibit action of these two enzymes within the patient's brain we will prolong uh, the uh, duration of action of dopamine in the patient's brain.
The drug that inhibits uh, activity of MAO-B enzyme is acylangelin, and uh, the drug that inhibits uh, activity of enzyme COMT is tolcapon. And uh, please pay attention, tolcapon uh, actually inhibits COMT not just in the patient's brain, and this way it prevents metabolizing of the dopamine into not active products, but also tolcapone inhibits COMT enzymes in periphery, periphery, and this way it increases amounts of levodopa that can reach <coughs> brain of the patient and be converted into dopamine. Side effects. Uh, Silangelin inhibits uh, MAO-B enzyme, but high doses of uh, these uh, drugs uh, also might inhibit MAO-A enzyme, which metabolizes epinephrine, norepinephrine and serotonin, and that can cause a hypertensive crisis in patients. Also, uh, silangelin and uh, tolcapone um, uh, it causes increased levels of levodopa and dopamine in the patient's system, which can lead to a nausea, orthostatic hypertension, uh, and dyskinesias. Uh, also, you have to remember that tolcapone can be toxic to liver, and uh, it actually can cause liver failure. Uh, the next group is called dopamine receptors agonist. It means that this group of drugs has ability to enter the brain and stimulate dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia. The dopamine receptors agonists uh, act like levodopa but have longer duration of action. Uh, unlike levodopa, uh, dopamine receptors agonists do not uh, produce symptoms of uh, movement disturbances and dyskinesias, and uh, they can be used uh, alone for the treatment of uh, Parkinson's disease, or and usually we use them in the early treatment uh, of Parkinson's disease, or we can use them um, in complex with levodopa. We can use uh, Pramipaxel as a prototype drug from group of uh, dopamine receptors uh, agonists. And another drug I would like you to remember uh, from the same group of dopamine receptors agonists, it is a, a apomorphin. Uh, we use apomorphin to treat symptoms of on-off phenomenon uh, when patients are stuck in a frozen position we administer apomorphine subcutaneously to treat this condition. And the last group uh, we call them miscellaneous drugs because they do not belong into any of those groups that we already talked about. Uh, the first one of, uh, is amantadine. Amantadine increases um, release of dopamine and also decreases reuptake of dopamine uh, back to the nerve endings. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the a drug becomes uh, ineffective after the long-term treatment. So today, uh, basically, we use amantadine only in the early stages of Parkinson's disease. And uh, the last group, those are anticholinergic uh, drugs. And uh, those are actually the first drugs that we used for treatment of Parkinson's disease before we uh, discovered levodopa. And um, uh, by blocking cholinergic receptors in the basal ganglia, anticholinergic drugs reduce tremor and muscle rigidity in patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, disorder. Of course, anticholinergic drugs are not as effective as other anti-Parkinson's drugs, uh, but when we use anticholinergic drugs with levodopa, uh, it show improvement in a patient's condition because uh, anticholinergic drugs uh, help to restore uh, acetylcholine and dopamine balance in a patient's system. All right, uh, so let's uh, summarize our knowledge about uh, treatment of Parkinson's disease.
Uh, today, the most effective treatment of Parkinson's disease is levodopa and carbidopa. But we already know that levodopa, uh, when we use it for the long-term treatment, causes movement disorders in patients. So therefore, if patients are younger than 65, then we prefer to start with other drugs. And uh, when they become not effective anymore, we switch to levodopa and carbidopa. If patient is over age 65, then we start with levodopa.